Now, today I was pretty confused to learn that the UK's largest teaching union, the National Education Union, or NEU, has criticised new government guidance designed to ensure political impartiality in the classroom. Now, impartiality means showing all perspectives of an argument. So it seems odd that a union dedicated to educating would be opposed to this, unless, of course, they don't understand what impartiality actually means. The NEU says there is absolutely no need for new guidance on how to appropriately handle political and social justice subjects in schools. They are claiming that this will prevent students from discussing topics like racism and the British Empire. I mean, where do we start with this? All right, seriously, OK. Take white privilege, usually taught by a load of white middle-class privileged individuals who've never consulted a person of colour or dealt with any underprivileged white people to find out how that particular narrative will go down. And more importantly, a subject that has nothing to do with the curriculum. Teaching this as fact without an opposing view is dangerous and likely to perpetuate a feeling of superiority by indoctrinating the innocent minds of children to maintain the status quo that white people are in fact privileged, which in my eyes is nonsense. Seems a pretty odd thing to promote under the guise of supposedly helping the situation. But Brighton and Hove Council reportedly feel this was a strategy appropriate for their schools, requiring teachers to do racial literacy training. Out of interest, I wonder how many people of colour work at Brighton and Hove Council. I bet you could count them on one hand. Impartiality would require you to impart the other narrative that privilege is not based on skin colour. Then there's confusing young minds on biological sex and gender identity. From the perspective as an adult, that's fine if you decide, you believe that you can switch genders just by self-identification. But I don't believe you can. But in Scotland, there was talk of enabling children as young as four to self-identify. I have a four-year-old, and he said he wants to be a car. But he can't, can he? Although, thankfully, in Scotland, they seem to be uh, rowing back from this after the outrage that it caused. But how dare they bring this into the classroom to kids as young as four? Now the vegetarians are at it. From their middle-class lofty high chair, one teacher has decided that kids will only have the vegetarian options. The reason given? The carbon footprint caused by meat and dairy, of course. A very laudable aim. But who are they to force their ideology on children? By all means, offer a vegetarian option, but it's hardly fair to pretty much force kids down this route. For some children, this is the only decent meal they'll get in the, at school. But certain elite who have factored that in, or have not factored that in, are preaching from a place of saving the planet. Now, I lecture in schools to kids as young as seven, all the way through to age 17 and to parents and teachers alike. And at no point do I feel the need to inject my personal views on race, gender, etc. When I went to school, I've got to hand it to the nuns who taught me. Whilst we were taught religion and to go to prayers, there was no real attempt to brainwash you. And, and other faiths were accepted and respected and their personal beliefs did not enter the classroom. After studying philosophy and theology, I pretty much left school an atheist. Now, Nadim Zahawi... I think is spot on. Teachers need to back off from teaching woke, transient narratives as though they are fact. Enabling discussion means true impartiality and listening to different views, not scaring kids into submission and taking advantage of their position of influence. Stop preaching and get on with teaching.